I just uh, ran across this guy on, on, on Twitter, and it's been just sort of like a, a horrible to see. A uh, Palestinian journalist in, uh, in England, uh, his name is Ahmed Al-Naku, uh, Al-Nu- Al-Nuwak. Al-Nuwak. And um, he has had over 20 members of his family, including, like, I think, uh, siblings and his father, killed in Israeli, uh, by Israeli bombing. And um, this is a, a story that is very common. Um, CNN reported on uh, Halloween on the 31st. I'm just finding the exact number here that 42 relatives were killed in one day in the same family. Three generations of this one particular family wiped off the map in one day in these Gaza Strip. I mean, this is um, in in. I can't and even. it shouldn't be like, I mean, surprising in the sense of when you start to think about how densely populated uh, Gaza is, when you start to think about how people ended up there, it was a basically a refugee camp. The whole thing was basically a refugee camp starting from, uh, you know, early in uh, 1948 prior to uh, Israeli um uh, independence as they call it um and through that in terms of the dispossession of of uh palestinians property and um and so the idea that families would be living with each other and all living in the same area you know you go from a refugee camp your you know your your village your town is um essentially you're expelled from there Families are going to stay with each other and they're going to there's not like there's a tremendous amount of options in terms of where to go in an area that is like, uh, you know, a little bit bigger than uh, Manhattan, twice the size of Manhattan in some ways. Detroit size, um, 141 square miles. And uh, and so it's very likely when Israel drops a bomb on an apartment building, you're going to be taking out f- whole families um and, and extended families and i i just i i can't even i, I can't even this begin. is why scholars are calling it crimes of genocide for I that can't, reason i can't even begin to and you'll notice that uh, on this uh he's on good morning britain it, it's all has this sort of like surreal uh feel and it, it, they write ahmed has lost 21 family members as if like he was at the mall and he can't find them yep. as opposed to uh, Ahmed's, you know, had 21 family members killed by Israeli bombing. Like that's what really is there. But listen to this exchange. It's sort of, it's, it, it's, it, it is. The it, follow-up it's, question from this uh, female reporter. What is her name here? Do we have it on the sound sheet? It is uh, Kate Garraway. Yeah, this is it. Really disgusting. Extraordinary. Because I believe that uh, some of the major Western media outlets actually are actually complicit in this war crime that Israel is committing committing against us. Complicit in what way? They provided Israel with the cover and atmosphere to do the massacres against us. The coverage has never been adequate on Palestine. There has been a lot of misinformation. There has been a lot of lies about what actually happened, not only in this conflict, not only since the 7th of October, but for 75 years of the conflict. You now, you're talking about we speaking as a Palestinian. Yeah. Israel's very clear that this is against Hamas, a terrorist organization that perpetrated the most horrific atrocities. I can understand why you, in the absolute vortex of your grief, feel anger. But but I'm pause but for one second. Can we, can we just like the, like how do you tell somebody that no, you're wrong? Twenty one members of your family, your nuclear family, your extended family have been killed and you're wrong as to who the war is being waged against. And then to go into this thing of like, 
you're not being rational because you're so upset about the 21 uh your family members being killed as if the uh response uh by israel is is completely rational dispassionate mm -hmm. and dispassionate just go back a little bit this is i I mean, the fa she starts the question and says, you say we. She's about to go down the road of saying, are you sympathetic with Hamas? And then catches herself slightly. But if an Israeli was sitting there, one of the, one of the family members of someone who was slaughtered by Hamas, you really think that would be her reaction? Of course. Not. If, if, if they said, if that family member said, you know, I do feel that Hamas is responsible, <laughs> you think that would be her reaction? Or is there some deep racism that is embedded in all of this coverage? It was very clear that this is against Hamas, a terrorist organization that perpetrated the most horrific atrocities. I can understand why you, in the absolute vortex of your grief, feel anger. But, but, but what can be done for the sake of all those there? Because what we don't want to get into is a war of words and hate, do we? Of course, of course. We don't want a war of war or hate, but we I need to be clear about something. This is not a war against Hamas. My family are not Hamas. My 14 yeah. nieces and nephews who are children, all under the age of 13, ranging from one to 13 are not Hamas. And they were killed. They were brutally killed while they were asleep. This is not a war on, uh, against Hamas. This is a war against the Palestinian people. And it has been always against the Palestinian people. My father is 75 years old and he was born a few months after the Nakba. Do you know what the Nakba is? The Nakba is the year in which Israel, the Zionist uh, militias forced, uh, forcibly displaced 750,000 Palestinian people from their homes and lands to create the state of Israel. This is, this is what actually happened. We have been living under this war and conflict and uh, onslaught and massacres for a long time. And it is right so, now. And it your is the father time to stop was... That. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I think it honestly, it's, you know, um, the idea that there are these stories getting out now and sort of like leaking through uh, the, 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 the mainstream press in this way. Yeah. Can we put up that CNN article actually? Um, is, um, is a big change. It, it's a big change. I mean, you know, I said this early days back when I was in, in, in Vegas when this first hit and I had a lot of time to sit in my hotel room and watch CNN. And uh, I remember thinking like, oh, this is, I've seen this before. Like I know, like I, you know, within 48 hours, I knew the names of like three different IDF spokespeople and they had um, you know one had a British accent and uh, uh, one had an American accent uh, and one had an Israeli accent but the um, you know the his English was was pretty impeccable and this you know for a long time was uh, one of the advantages that Israel had among others in terms of like being able to present its case to the united states let's say mm. um was that th the you know uh, israel was was very european in its um you know in its in presentation yeah and uh people the vernacular and uh, just like it was easier for people in the West to, to interview these people and get their story out as opposed to, um, you know, the the Palestinians uh, who, you know, wouldn't um, were just simply did not have the same sort of like familiarity and, um, uh, you know, with with Western media and there wasn't the savvy and et cetera, et cetera. And that has changed. Yeah, that has changed over the past, like, you know, 20, 25 years or so, um, where, I mean, you still, you know, you had people obviously like Edward Said and uh, and yeah. others. But um, in terms of being able to hear from a wide range of of, of Palestinians and, uh, you know, 
that's on Good Morning Britain. Yeah. That guy yeah. I was going to mention Saeed. There's a documentary I was watching last night uh, that's available on YouTube. Ed- Edward Said in Palestine, 1988. People can look up. And there's two parts that they're so like, it remi- this part reminds me of that so much. Like his treatment in the media. One, it's him on like a Mari Povich type panel show. And there's a Israeli spokesperson there. And, and the, the immediate framing of the uh, conversation is this Israeli spokesperson is here, even though Edward Said is part of the PLO and they're terrorists and that that's like the that's like what he, the, the hill he has to climb up immediately and there's another part of the documentary where he's telling this story about like and it's like a, a dark humor Palestinian dark humor of about like they call us terrorists no matter what we do and whatever like that and he's telling this whole like joke and at the end of it the person filming is like but you denounce terror right and it's well it's like that's the same that we saw at the start of this and it's as to sam's point it's slowly eroding right remember we covered all those clips like with do you condemn hamas do you condemn hamas even though your family just died yeah it's the same thing right yeah. that you saw and it's the notion that palestinians have to be perfect victims in order to get sympathy but it is eroding thankfully one i mean people be able to tell their own stories too. Social media and the internet has changed everything. When Palestinians and people in Gaza are able to film the atrocities and we've all seen way too many things that we'll never forget. But that's the fact that the fact is that's what people are experiencing. Um, And just quickly, I just have to show this image because another effort at humanizing these Palestinian Americans uh, or these Palestinians Palestinian American family mourns 42 relatives killed in a single day in Gaza. You can see the photo of this family here. And that is an American (laughs) um, who's never going to forget that their government was complicit in funding the killing of 42 members of that person's family. That's not how you fight a terror organization. (laughs) Can, I, massacre I, I, civilians do we do we even care that there are palestinian americans in this country that are sitting by and understanding that their tax dollars are going towards bombs that are killing their family and like we're censuring rashida talib who has palestinian family who knows that she's a part of the rep the government that is is green lighting the the weapons that they're going to kill her own family and and this is like the person that we need to be condemning here understand what that must feel like what must that what what does that what must that feel like for a palestinian american and there are palestinian americans yeah a lot a lot 